Andy Mahar, and I'm working here at the Institute of Global Food Security in Queen's University, Belfast. One of my primary research interests is into an organic arsenic in rice. We're doing that because rice happens to be highly efficient at taking arsenic out of soils because of its growing conditions and it leads to high levels of inorganic arsenic which is a class one non-threshold human carcinogen. I started looking at arsenic uptake into plants a long time ago from an evolutionary context and then we didn't have much really ways of putting that into human food chains until we started thinking about rice and how rice was grown and we rice is quite unusual in terms of most crops that it's grown under flooded conditions where most crops are other crops, cereal crops for example, wheat, barley are growing under what we call aerobic conditions and what we found was those anaerobic conditions actually led to the mobilisation of the arsenic naturally in the soil and the rice is very efficient at taking that arsenic up into the shoot and eventually into the grain and it's actually highly problematic with respect to total loadings of arsenic in rice. Rice typically has 10 times more arsenic than any other grain and when we looked at the arsenic speciation in that grain it's predominantly as inorganic arsenic and when we started doing some back of the envelope calculations we quickly worked out that rice was a dominant source of this carcinogen into the human diet and that previous study had not been known. We started looking at rice in a context of Bangladesh and Bangladesh is quite unusual that uh, it has very high levels of natural arsenic in the groundwaters and we knew from a student that came over to work with me that they were irrigating rice with this contaminated water so we started thinking about well is rice taking up this arsenic that's been used in the irrigation water, coming from the irrigation water. And when we started doing that, we saw that rice was problematic, that it was highly efficient at taking the arsenic up. And we worked quite a bit in Bangladesh. And then we started doing rice from elsewhere around the world. And we found no matter where we went, that we found high levels of inorganic arsenic in the rice. So the groundwater did elevate the rice a bit, but the main problems was just rice full stop. We started off using relatively crude techniques, just using atomic absorption techniques interfaced with hydride generation or using atomic fluorescence spectroscopy as well interfaced with hydride generation. Uh, but we started moving in pretty early in the days into using HPLC, ICPMS, so using an ion exchange chromatography, separating the species and then using the ultrasensitive detection that ICPMS offers and there's about two common species of arsenic in rice which is inorganic arsenic which encompasses both arsenate and arsenite and then you've got an organic species which is a predominantly DMA, dimethyl arsenic acid and the other two that we look after and since I've come to Belfast we've advanced just to use an ion chromatography rather than HPLC and we get better sensitivity and indeed that's what's driven the science Future steps and where things are going are, it's predominantly been driven by legislation and regulations that are in the pipeline. So based on our work and others, that the European Food Standards Agency, the US Food and Drug Administration, World Health Organization, have all had to come back and address this problem of inorganic arsenic and rice. And they're all compiling and collecting data from arsenic and rice, not just rice grain, but rice is in 101 different products from Rice Krispies, cereal bars, uh, it's in many, many baby foods for example, and they're having to go through and analyse them and work out what are the concentrations, what the human health consequences are, and therefore how to set standards. Ultimately, we'd like to reduce inorganic arsenic in the human diet, particularly in those countries which consume lots of rice. So. We're thinking about how to breed inorganic arsenic out of rice. Can we do that? We're thinking about technologies, simple technologies. If we can cook rice in the right, right way, can we move inorganic arsenic out of it? We're thinking about education. You know, there's other grains. You just don't have to depend on rice. We're thinking agronomically. If you grow rice, rice grows quite well without flooding it. And Therefore, you can reduce the arsenic almost tenfold by growing rice under non-flooded conditions. Unfortunately, you swap cadmium for arsenic as a problem under non-flooded flooded conditions. So it's, and also the flooded conditions are very good at pest management, which 
you remove the benefits of flooded conditions, so it's, nothing's ever simple.